Chris, it's great to have you on. So let's start with Crown Holdings. Crown Holdings, it's a, one of the lar world's largest women of Bev can producers. Uh, they're in the midst of a multi-year growth expansion. I think it's been uh, under a little bit of pressure due to uh, you know some hard seltzer euphoria that's recently been waning. But we still like this. We like the you know the progression the management team's making in the portfolio, and we continue to think they're going to you know price and grow of, uh, essentially above market. So we definitely like that one. I love the way a company like this connects so many dots from hard seltzer to aluminum and everything that's going on. Shares are down about two thirds of a percent today. You have a hundred and twenty nine dollar price target. Uh, you also have a pick in chemicals and in agriculture. On chemicals, DuPont, um, I, you know, again, maybe you can contextualize this one for everybody to explain where we are, you know, in terms of quote unquote cycles or just kind of um, the supply demand balance here. That's a great question, Kelly. It's, so when I look at DuPont, it's no longer the massive bellwether uh, that it once was. Uh, management team has done an excellent job getting the portfolio essentially where I perceive, um, you know, exactly where it needs to be. There would be you know, potentially a few more steps. Uh, they could take, but DuPont, through most of its um, segments, has excellent pricing power. Uh, they have best-in-class uh, technology, R&D capabilities. Uh, and then when I look at their actual end markets, uh, they have a fantastic electronics business, which I think is going to undergo a significant multi-year growth expansion. Uh, and then also in water and protection, they have a best-in-class filtration asset, which I th think is going to continue to grow at least in the mid-single digits. Water, and then also their protective portfolio, uh, once again, is certainly a market leader. So that's one, I, you know, coming into this, uh, I think it's been a significant underperformer, but I think the turns are, the, the tides are definitely beginning to turn for the company, so we're definitely bullish on that one. And $123 is your price target there. In aggregate, Culture, you like kind of an ag science company called FMC, $94 price target there. You also like PPG. Uh, but let me just ask, Chris, whether all of these companies would potentially be squeezed by high energy prices or high input prices for raw materials. They already are. Uh, you know, if, when you go back to, I would argue it actually started occurring uh, right at the, towards the end of the 2020 uh, co you know, COVID uh, when we were all still shut down. But you start seeing inflation across pretty much any feedstock that goes into the uh, chemical supply chain, uh, whether that's natural gas, uh, oil derivatives, um, you know, NGLs, uh, even coal, obviously, elsewhere in the world. Uh, and that's been going on essentially throughout the entire year. And you've seen that be exacerbated by winter storm Murray and uh, eventually Hurricane Ida. Um, so it's been problematic. You've also seen a lot of facility closures, both planned and unplanned. A lot of that was due to maintenance deferrals uh, during COVID. Uh, and then also transportation logistics. I think we all see what's happening in the port of Long Beach. Uh, so you're seeing not only reliability issues, but also pricing issues, and then also labor, um, essentially going from shortages to a relative you know, staggering amounts of inflation. So uh, the good news is when I look at those factors collectively on the inflationary front, I do believe they're beginning to ease. Uh, but as some of your guests have pointed out earlier today, I, I honestly do believe the term transitory is being used uh, a little bit too much. Hmm. Do these companies have pricing power? In other words, you talked about the, the rising input costs. Can they pass them along? Uh, our, our, our favorite picks to uh, do, if you look at the most uh, you know, common factors across uh, our th three to uh, seven top picks when we initiated earlier this week, uh, most of them do have a net pricing power is the term I'd like to use. Mm -hmm. You're still in the process, given the uh, accelerating rate of inflation throughout 2021, a lot of companies are, in fact, playing catch-up, uh, which has mm -hmm. been difficult, and I think it's going to continue to be a theme in the back half of this year. Now, when we head into 2022, and if we get even just a little bit of moderation, which is ultimately uh, embedded in our forecasts, uh, there are a lot of companies that will be able to hold on to that pricing power. You mentioned PP PG, uh, coatings uh, should uh, be one of those sectors. Uh, hmm. We like that. And then, once again, there's some other factors we like there as well. But the, on the inflationary front, they should be able to get net pricing. And then there are other companies in our coverage which also have inflationary pass-throughs as well.